And please welcome our platform party, Rob Eistad, University Faculty Marshal. Dale Merrill, Dean, College of the Arts. Carrie Knudsen Miller, Dean, University Extended Education and International Programs. Raman Unikrishnan, Dean, College of Engineering and Computer Science. David Bowman, Interim Dean, College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Scott Payton, Dean, College of Communications. Anil Puri, Dean, Mahalo College of Business and Economics. Cheryl Fontaine, Dean, College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Claire Cavallero, Dean, College of Education. Tanenson Osagura, Dean of Students. Lori Rhodes, Dean, College of Health and Human Development. Yoon Vu, President, Alumni Association. Maggie White, California State University Trustee. Michael Badal, President, Associated Students. Kelsey Brewer, California State University Trustee. Emily Bonney, Chair, Academic Senate. Berenicia Johnson Eanes, Vice President for Student Affairs. Jose Cruz, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Rebecca Eisen, California State University Trustee. Maria Elena Salinas, Univision News Anchor. <laughs> Timothy White, Chancellor. <laughs> Mildred Garcia, President. <laughs> Welcome to the California State University Fullerton Class of 2016 Commencement Ceremony. I'm Dr. Rob Eistad, Professor and Director of Choral Studies in the School of Music. As a faculty member and a fellow Titan alum, 
it gives me great pleasure to serve as the university faculty marshal today. I congratulate you on your many achievements and extend you my wishes for a future of creativity, success, and happiness. Please stand as the Cal State Fullerton ROTC Honor Guard proceeds with the presentation of colors. The California State University Fullerton 2016 commencement ceremony has begun. You may be seated if you're still standing. <laughs> there are many special guests in the audience today, and we extend our heartiest welcome to each and every one of you. On behalf of the university community and the class of 2016, we thank you for joining us to celebrate these graduates and their accomplishments. Each graduate will receive a certificate of recognition for participation at their college or program graduation ceremony where their individual name will be, will be called. This certificate is signed by the dean of their respective college and the president of the university. At this time, I would like to invite the president of California State University Fullerton, Dr. Mildred Garcia, to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Eistad. Good morning, buenos dias. Dr. Eistad, I am honored to recognize you as Cal State Fullerton's Outstanding Professor of the Year and grateful for your participation as faculty marshal for our 2016 ceremonies. Like most of our dedicated faculty members, Dr. Eistad could teach anywhere in the world. But he chooses Cal State Fullerton because, as a proud alum, he understands the transformative power of a Cal State Fullerton degree and is eager to ensure the next generation of Titans achieve theirs. Upon his return to his alma mater in 2006, Dr. Eistad became the university's third director of choral studies, and he has since built upon the program's legacy by elevating its university singers into a prominent international position. Under his direction, they have performed around the world with artists such as Reba McIntyre, Andre Bocelli, and rock star Beck, which is appropriate because Dr. Eistad is a rock star professor. His classroom is structured through active guided laboratory experiences that not only promote a mastery of musical study, but also encourage development of public speaking and leadership. That is how outstanding professors affect eternity. And I am proud the Outstanding Professor of the Year Award will now eternally shine a light on this extraordinary faculty member Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating our 2015-16 Outstanding Professor, Dr. Rob Eistad. Thank you. And now, class of 2016, it is my honor to welcome you to the most important day on the academic calendar and my favorite day of the year, commencement. Congratulations y felicidades. It is indeed a wonderful celebration, one that I suspect began last night, ran into the wee hours of the morning, and will continue throughout the entire weekend, and maybe next week too. But that's okay, graduates, you've earned it. And per tradition, some of you are even boasting about your achievements with your messages on the back of your graduation caps. I am seeing things like, I am now one degree hotter. <laughs> and another one that says, gracias a mi familia, amigos y el café. But no matter what it says on the back of your cap, 
what language it's written in, or how much coffee you drank to get here, you all look amazing. And together, you're 10,000 degrees hotter. You've done your part, now I'll do mine. I'm gonna keep my speech short. I thought you would like that. You've juggled family, work, school, and binge watching, Game of Thrones and maybe Project Runway. You've learned new lessons and made old friends, worked all day and pulled all nighters. And because you didn't turn your back on your challenges today, you reached one of your dreams, a university degree. But you didn't get here alone. You are surrounded by family, friends, faculty, advisors, staff, classmates who mentored you, taught you, Snapchatted with you, and when you needed it most, they were there for you. Please join me in thanking everyone that helped you get to where you are today. <laughs> Graduates, New, you now join an illustrious group of 250,000 lifelong titans who continue to reach higher on behalf of the university and every one of us that call it home. You, as you join their ranks, there are only three things I'd like you to remember to make sure your future tracks with your alumni. Number one, Keep learning. We Titans are lifelong learners. And while your degree will open many doors for you, it's your job to fill your mind with what's on the other side. Make this a habit, and the door will get bigger, revealing a breadth of knowledge beyond what you can even imagine. I know this because like many of you, my path to commencement was not a traditional one. I was born as the first one to go to my co to college, and I was from the Brooklyn Housing Projects. But I, it never stopped, and I wanted to achieve my dream so I could help you achieve yours. Keep learning. Number two, give back. Or perhaps I should say, continue to give back. This year, Titan students performed 1.4 million hours of community service in Orange County. Graduates, that is now your legacy. And I encourage you to spread the Titan spirit in your communities by volunteering, serving, and reaching back to take the hand of just one person to get the university degree of their dreams. As graduates, you now serve as a guiding light in our community who look to see what is possible. Shine bright for them, as so many have shined bright for you. And number three, remember your alma mater, Cal State Fullerton. As you venture out into the world, remain connected to your university Share with us and come back and tell us the many milestones in your career and in your life. Remember, once a Titan, that's right, make every day count, make us proud, and in the tradition of, in the tradition of your alma mater, make a difference. Congratulations, class of 2016. I am so very proud of you. Felicidades. At this time, I would like to recognize and welcome some of our distinguished guests. Of course, both the CSU Board of Trustees and the Titan class of 2016 is represented by the same amazing young woman, Kelsey Brewer. Kelsey is, there she is, stand up Kelsey. Kelsey is joined on stage by fellow CSU trustee, Maggie White and Incoming Chair of the CSU Board of Trustees, Rebecca Eisen. I am also
also pleased to welcome CXU Vice Chancellor Lauren Blanchard and Vice Chancellor Lori, Lori Lamb, both who are in attendance today. Thank you so much for joining us. You're out there somewhere. And now, graduates, you're in for a special treat. As most of you know, there are 23 campuses in the CSU system, which means there are a lot of commencement ceremonies going on around the state. But only one of them has the chancellor of the entire system at their commencement, and that's Cal State Fullerton. Chancellor Timothy White is also a first-generation college student and a product of the CSU. Granted, he didn't go to Cal State Fullerton, but we'll forgive him for that, especially because he's here today, and he also graduated from our sister campuses, Cal State East Bay and Fresno State. We are fortunate to have him leading the CSU system, and I am honored to introduce him to our class of 2016 and to the lectern to speak to the class of 2016. Graduates, family, and friends, join me in welcoming with a titan welcome the chancellor of the CSU, Dr. Timothy White. Well, thank you, President Garcia, the Cal State Fullerton faculty and staff and the leadership at all levels at this great university to the trustees and distinguished guests. Welcome to the Titan alumni that are here, the family and friends of our graduates this after, or this morning, I guess. I'm honored to be here this morning to help celebrate this momentous occasion and to be among the first to congratulate the class of 2016. I, I just learned from your president that there are 250,000 Titan alums, but across the 23 campuses, you are joining a class that now is approaching 3,100,000 alumni of the California State University who live and work in every industry and business in every continent of the globe. You are joining an alumni network that I encourage you to stay connected with. Yeah, that is, that's exactly right. <laughs> it must be like six in the morning. Come on, you guys. All right, now we're talking, now we're talking. So what the heck is a Titan? <laughs> Terrific, inspiring, totally awesome. Now what? <laughs> That's Titan spelled phonetically. Well, let me, let me suggest what a Titan is. You and your peers will be called upon to solve the world's most complex issues and challenges of our time with knowledge, with teamwork, and with a passion and commitment to inclusivity and excellence. And I know that as Cal State Fullerton graduates, you have the grit, you have the smarts, and quite frankly, you have the swagger to overcome your personal and professional challenges to embrace opportunities and to spark innovation in this great world of ours. Indeed, each of you embody the characteristics of a titan. You are the economic and social engine of California. You will drive this state and this nation to a new level of social and economic prosperity. You are the protectors and advocates of social justice that will e guarantee equality, equity, and opportunity for all around us. It's also my honor this morning to recognize Kelsey Brewer, graduating today as a Titan with a bachelor's degree in political science. She served our university well as a student trustee since 2014. She's been an amazing champion, a powerful champion for our students and for our academic enterprise, and has represented not only this campus, 
but the other 22 campuses from Arcata in the north to San Diego in the south, from San Luis Obispo on the west to Fresno, Chico, Sacramento on the east. Kelsey, I can speak for the entire Board of Trustees and saying thank you for your service as a trustee and how proud we are of you graduating today and we will have a chance to celebrate you at your department celebration in just a few minutes later this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chancellor White. It is now my pleasure to introduce Trustee Rebecca Eisen of the California State University Board of Trustees. Thank you very much. I would like to say good morning, but it seems so inadequate. So I'm going to say great morning. Um, I am here, as you've heard, as one of the trustees of the California State University Board of Trustees. It's a 25-member board that governs not only Cal State Fullerton, but the entire 23 campus uh, glory, which is the Cal State University. You might not know uh, our trustees. We're not as famous as President Garcia and others that are <laughs> on this stage, but I am honored to be able to convey the congratulations of that entire board to you. I think you might know a couple of the folks on our board Governor Jerry Brown is a member of our Board of Trustees, and on his behalf, I extend congratulations to you. Uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Gavin Newsom is on our board. On his behalf, I extend my congratulations to you. And it is pretty clear to me from what I've heard so far that you're already very familiar with our student trustees, and in particular, one Kelsey Brewer, um, the chancellor just asked you what a titan is, and I'm not sure myself, but if Kelsey Brewer is an embodiment of what a titan is, that is a pretty remarkable thing to be. Um, I mention, and the chancellor has mentioned, that Cal State Fullerton is one of the gems in a great system of 23 campuses. And when you graduate today, you will join that three million plus group uh, who are the alums of the California State University system. Uh, it's a remarkable system. I want your parents to know that it is the largest university and the most diverse university in America and probably the world. It is quite an amazing family you are part of. I also have a degree from a Cal State University in English. I, you talk about the three million uh, alums. I think I got my degree about one million years ago. Uh, but I still remember it very well because it's given me a lifetime of learning and interest in language and words. My degree was in English. Um, and I think about the word that you are going to hear more often than any other word today, and that is congratulations. So I thought about that word and where it derived from, and I uh, did some research, and I see that, and the Spanish and Italian speakers here will recognize that it comes from the Latin congratulari. I hope there are no Latin professors here to correct my pronunciation. It means with thankfulness, with gratitude. And I know that when you accept your degrees today, you are accepting them with thankfulness and gratitude to your families and friends who have supported you, uh, to this great university and its president and staff and faculty who have supported you all these years, and with thankfulness and gratitude to your own perseverance and resilience and talents that you brought to this particular wonderful moment in time. So on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees, I would like to add to the many you are going to receive, congratulations, class of 2016. Thank you, Trustee Eisen. 
It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Berenicia Johnson Eanes, Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Eanes. Good morning, class of 2016. I'm going to ask you to take a moment and exercise some self-reflection. It is today that we want you to do the most important thing, and that is to soak up this moment. I want you to remember the first day of first grade, the first day of middle school, the first day you came to us on this campus. And I want you to know and always remember that we adore you. We are so glad that you decided to come here and invest in yourself, in your higher education, in this experience that is going to transform your life and the lives of others forever. Your education is a game changer and please do not ever, ever forget it. I want you to remember that we are so glad that you made an intentional choice, a purposeful choice, an amazing choice to come here to Cal State Fullerton. And I want you to remember that you will always be proud Titans and that we support you in everything you do. Thank you and congratulations. I would like to now introduce Ms. Yoon Vu, President of the California State University Fullerton Alumni Association and alumni of the Mahalo College of Business and Economics, Class of 2004. Thank you, Dr. Eanes. Good morning, al graduates, alumni, and distinguished guests. My name is Yung Vu, class of 2004, and it's been an honor to serve as your Alumni Association president. This is one of the most exciting times in your life, and you have so much to be proud of today. Like many of you, I was a first generation graduate in my family. My college journey was full of hurdles and obstacles. My father passed away when I was nine unexpectedly. As the second eldest, I had a duty and responsibility to support my family financially. With limited financial resources to purchase a vehicle, I carpooled most of my college life and even walked two hours home once. My transportation challenge meant spending many hours waiting for a ride. I used that time to my advantage, utilizing many of the campus resources, such as participating in student organizations to enhance my leadership and communication skills, therefore setting myself apart from others. Many of you took advantage of those campus resources too. You soon realized how invaluable they are. But if not, don't worry, it's not too late. Don't wait until you feel settled in your career to come back. Instead, stay connected throughout your lifetime. The wealth of knowledge and wisdom gained from staying connected to Cal State Fullerton early on will provide you with a base of friendships and network that will help you reach your full potential. Without my continuous involvement with my college and the Alumni Association, my personal and professional growth would have been much slower. What I've learned is not what happens to you in life that matters. It's how you respond to what happens to you that makes the difference. There are two things in life that will define you. One, your determination when you have nothing. And two, your attitude when you have everything. Know that Cal State Fullerton will always be your home. Return to campus often. Share your experiences with us. Stay engaged and involved. Share with the next generation how your transformative educational experience impacted your life. Leave here today with your head held high because you're graduating from an amazing institution. The education you receive here will open doors you never knew existed. Be proud of your achievements and celebrate your accomplishments. Show your Titan pride as you are among the best and brightest. Remember that your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card, and the way you make others feel is your trademark. Congratulations, class of 2016. Welcome to the Titan alumni family. Go out and continue to reach higher. Thank you, Ms. Vu. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Emily Bonney, Associate Professor of Liberal Studies and Chair of the Academic Senate, who will give her greetings on behalf of the faculty.
Good morning. I am honored to have the opportunity to say a few words on this incredible occasion. It is incredibly daunting to look out at this sea of graduates and your loving, loyal supporters. You leave here this morning equipped with the toolkit that your education has provided, ready to take on any and all challenges that confront you. Fortunately, those challenges will not include those that arise in Game of Thrones. I am an addict. But first, congratulations are in order. You should begin by congratulating yourselves for the diligence and dedication that have brought you to this moment. So one more round of applause for the class of 2016. Second, you did not make this journey alone. So we should now take a moment and recognize and thank the friends and family for their support along the way. <laughs> Commencement speakers, even those charged as I am with making only a few remarks, face a formidable challenge. The graduates want to seem attentive, but the occasion is just too darned exciting. The prospects of parties and celebrating with family and friends, hard to concentrate on what's happening right now but I'm gonna try anyway. My message is that you can now make choices you may never have imagined. Since you arrived on this campus, you have had the opportunity to interact with talented and committed faculty and staff, as well as with all the other students who have traveled with you. You know things that you didn't know before, and that's great, but more important, because of those experiences, you acquired ways of thinking that really expanded the choices that you can make, both professionally and personally. And that power to choose is truly a treasure. You can quite literally be anything you want to be, and you can change that along the way. Because my college gave me, also a first generation graduate, new ways to think, I could start as a part-time faculty member here more years ago than I'm going to tell you, then go to law school and onto a private practice for 10 years and return again in 2001 in a tenure track position. I tell you this to illustrate how empowered you are as a result of the time you have spent here. And you develop these ways of thinking and the power to choose that goes with them by all you have done at CSUF. Working crazy hours while going to school full time, coming back to school after years of doing something else, engaging in service on campus and in the community, cultivating a love of learning and inspiring all of us who have been lucky enough to work with you. We the faculty, staff, and administrators who have watched your progress can claim only modest credit for your achievements, but we are very, very proud of you. So on behalf of the Academic Senate, the faculty and staff of California State University Fullerton, I thank you for spending your time at CFUF learning with us. I congratulate you on your achievements and I encourage you to celebrate those today. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Michael Badal, President of the California State University Fullerton Associated Students. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hello guests, and most importantly, graduates. And to my family and any other Assyrian speakers in the crowd, Shlamalochun and Avitun Basima. My name is Michael Badal and I'm the ASI president. Um, at this point, like everyone else has done, I would like to thank all of the loved ones that we have out here today and say a special thank you to all the mentors and amazing uh, faculty and staff we have here at Cal State Fullerton. Special shout out to my mentor, Dr. Dave Edwards. Uh, let's have a round of applause for these family, friends, and mentors, please. Today, 
I would like to talk about how college is like a lost and found. Coming to Cal State Fullerton as an 18-year-old kid, I was lost and did not know what I wanted to do. I, w I was in marching band for about seven years, and I thought that I wanted to be a music education major. And then I wanted to be political science and then philosophy. So it took me some time to finally decide on my political science degree. The first time I ever experienced feeling found here at Cal State Fullerton was at orientation, when I saw the orientation leaders and they were such a close-knit group of people. That's what I wanted from my college experience. That is what set me on the path that got me here today and got me involved at Cal State Fullerton. Special shout out to anyone in ASI that is graduating today, as well as Phi Phi Cap Alpha to my brothers in Pi Cap Alpha. So I realized refle today, reflecting on my college experience, that going through college, uh, you can compare it to different items you find in the lost and found. One item you find frequently is a pair of keys. Keys are used to open doors and unlock obstacles that are in our way. Cal State Fullerton helped us get the education, tools, and experience that we need as a graduating class to have a pair of keys to unlock paths for our future endeavors. Sunglasses are another item that you find in the lost and found. Sunglasses help change your perspectives on how you see the world. Our time here at college has done that for us and broadened our views and helped us see things in a more positive light. The last item you frequently find, find in the lost and found is a credit card. Many of us here today worked tireless hours to help support ourselves through college, and some of us had support from loved ones. Either way, we are trying to build a brighter future for ourselves financially, and the way Cal State Fullerton has helped us do that is by getting us ready and uh, giving us competitive skills and preparing us for the workforce. And if you're like me, hopefully once you get that job, you can give your parents' credit card back. So. College is like lost and found for many reasons, but one thing I have learned as well is that it is okay to feel lost sometimes because Cal State Fullerton has given us the tools so that we can find ourselves in whatever journey we may embark on. College has given us this opportunity to feel lost at times, but we have all found ourselves uh, here today at graduation. So with that, I would like to say a huge congratulations to the class of 2016. Thank you, Michael. It is now my pleasure to invite President Garcia back to the lectern to introduce the keynote speaker. President Garcia. It is now my pleasure and honor to welcome your keynote speaker, Maria Elena Salinas. Who, by the way, lives in Florida, but she came back home. She's from Southern California, she's from LA. A winner of six Emmy Awards, the Gracie Award, and one of the first Latinas to win the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Academy of Television Arts, Maria is, Maria Elena is the co-anchor of Noticiero Univision and co-host of the news magazine, Aquí y Ahora. Her memoir, Yo Soy La Hija de Mi Padre, Una Vida de secreto, Sin Secretos, I Am My Father's Daughter, A Life Without Secrets, is critically acclaimed and made the bestsellers list for Spanish language books. Over three decades, she has informed and empowered millions of viewers around the world. She shattered glass ceilings for women and Latinos. She's interviewed every US president since Jimmy Carter. She moderated the first bilingual national Democratic presidential candidate debate in US history. And she was called and is the voice of Hispanic America by the New York Times. Maria Elena also understands the transformative role education plays in upward social mobility. Since 2000, her namesake scholarship has been awarded to Latino journalism students around the country, and she sits on the board of the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. I can go on and on about Maria Elena, how great she is, but the bottom line is this. Maria Elena's life and career encapsulates who we are as titans, and before she delivers her keynote speech, I am proud to welcome her into our family with the conferral of an honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. For the conferral of the honorary degree, I now invite Maria Elena to the lectern, as well as Trustee Eisen, who will confer the degree.
by the authority vested in me as a trustee of the California State University Board of Trustees, I confer upon Maria Elena Salinas our highest honor, the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and honors it conveys. It is an ancient custom to invest those who receive academic degrees with hoods that designate the degree bestowed. I have asked President Garcia and Dean Fontaine to assist me in making this investiture. Class of 2016, ladies and gentlemen, my honor to introduce Dr. Maria Elena Salinas. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias, Dr. Garcia. La verdad que esta mujer merece un aplauso porque es una mujer maravillosa que inspira a todos. Well, good morning, everyone. Muy buenos días. President Garcia, Chancellor White, Provost Cruz, Trustee Rebecca Eisen, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty, parents, and students. It's such a pleasure to be here today, and I'm so honored to have been invited to be your commencement speaker this year. It means so much to me for so many reasons. It's like being invited back to your home and putting out the red carpet so that you can feel like a hero's welcome, and that's how I feel right now. California, like Dr. Garcia said, is my home state. This is where I was born, where I grew up, where I have my childhood memories, where I began my career, where I was formed as a woman, and most importantly, as a Latina. I'm invited back here by President Garcia because she believes that my life experience is something that maybe you could relate to and that somehow my experiences can be of help, in some help, as you enter a new stage in your life. And she's not wrong because I see myself in many of you. I'm the daughter of immigrants. I grew up in a world guided not by one, but two cultures. I could communicate in two languages. I could follow two sets of traditions. I grew up enjoying the sounds and the flavors and the sense of two very different worlds that blend together to become one. I grew up proud of my cultural heritage. Like many of you, I had to translate to my mother who lived here for many decades but never learned English. I had to start working at 14 years of age in a clothing factory to help my parents pay the rent and pay for my own private school education. Like many of you, I saw my parents work hard and sacrifice so much to support their family and to try to give us a better life, a better one that they had. Like many of you, I received from them the best possible inheritance that I could have gotten, a solid work ethic and a strong social conscience. And look at the results. You are all graduating today, and I just got an honorary doctorate. So congratulations, class of 2016. Your parents must be so proud of you. I know my parents would be very proud of me. Now, if you allow me for just, bear with me for just a couple of minutes, I'm going to address some of the parents here in Spanish. Quisiera pronunciar unas palabras en español para los padres de familia hispanos, no porque crea que no hablan inglés, yo sé que muchos de ustedes son bilingües, sino porque nuestro idioma es lo que une a nuestra comunidad y es la herencia cultural que le estamos dejando a nuestros hijos. Hoy quisiera felicitarlos a ustedes, los padres de familia, El logro de sus hijos es de sus hijos porque ellos fueron los que se pasaron largas horas estudiando y preparándose para salir adelante y para sacar buenas calificaciones. Pero ustedes como padres tienen mucho de qué sentirse orgullosos. Todos sus sacrificios hoy están dando fruto. Quizás no se den cuenta de lo mucho que su apoyo significó para sus hijos. Quizás no pudieron ayudarlos con sus tareas. Quizás no pudieron ayudar a pagar su colegiatura, pero lo que les dieron es el ejemplo de esfuerzo y perseverancia que los va a ayudar a triunfar en la vida. Felicidades a ustedes. 
President Garcia, I want to thank you and the Board of Trustees for considering that my 35-year long career as a journalist deserved to be recognized with this honorary degree. It took me 35 long years to get my diploma, but it was well worth it. <laughs> Long time. Many of you will likely thank your teachers upon receiving your degree, and I would like to do the same. I want to thank my first news director, Pete Moraga, who taught me how to be a journalist. I will never forget the lessons I learned from him. And I also have to credit him with opening my eyes to the needs of our community and awakening me, the desire to empower them. I remember the day, it was an election day in the early 1980s when I went out to cover a story. At the time, Latinos were 25% of the population in Los Angeles, yet we had no political representation. Finally, a Latino was running for office. So I went out and I interviewed people on the street, and I interviewed about 16 people, and out of 16, 15 weren't voting. They didn't know that there was an election or they weren't citizens, or they weren't registered. I went back to my newsroom, very disappointed, and told my boss, I can't do the story because I don't have anyone on camera telling me who they're gonna vote for. And he told me, can't you see? Your story is right there in front of you. Here's a very important election in where Latinos have a chance to elect one of their own to the city council and they are not going to vote because they feel disenfranchised from mainstream America. So I didn't only learn an important lesson in journalism that day, but Pete's words had such an impact on me that I knew at that moment that my job as a journalist working in Spanish language media would go beyond reporting the news. I would have to provide information to our viewers on the rights and the responsibilities that they had to many, their newly adopted country. The political empowerment of Latinos would become my mission. And another lesson that I learned is that if a community wants to get ahead, they can't just be bystanders. They have to be participants in forging their own destiny. No doubt that today from heaven, Pete would be proud of me receiving this doctorate. And I'm grateful to his son, Pete Moraga Jr. for being here today. Thank you, Pete. You know, during those years of, early years of my career, I remember reporting on how minorities would one day become a majority. It was a projection that seemed galaxies away. It seemed so many years away, so far in the distant future. Yet, we are here now, we're just a few years away from that happening, and you, students, are the ones that will be the major players in this new dynamic that will impact our country economically, culturally, and politically. I'm sure you've heard this many times, and here it goes again. The future of this country is in your hands. Now, I don't mean to scare you, and I don't want to just, uh, at a time when you're just thinking about graduating, I don't want to scare you. Uh, you're about to begin your career, but unfortunately, it is true. However, you're lucky. You are lucky. Not lucky to be graduating, because that doesn't take luck. That takes work, a lot of work long hours of study to pass the test, that, to turn that paper in on time. It takes dedication, it takes perseverance, it takes commitment and it takes drive to stick it out to the end. And believe me, you earned your diploma today. But you're lucky to have been born in this generation because our generation worked very hard so that your generation could thrive. Even though the world is more complex than it was when your parents were your age, you have more things going for you than your parents did. You have so many more resources to face the challenges that life throws at you. Just think of it. Millennials have surpassed baby boomers. According to the census, there are 75.4 million millennials and 74.9 million baby boomers. So there are more of you than us and your parents. You have technology, you have laptops, iPads, iPhones, you have Google, you have Facebook. You now live in a world that is interconnected. You're lucky to be the beneficiaries of so many people and organizations and institutions and other entities, both public and in the private sectors, who have put education at the forefront of their efforts and priorities. You're lucky to be graduating from Cal State Fullerton, a school that prides itself in the diversity of its student body, where you have an amazing faculty that is passionate 
about providing you with the best and most unique education possible. A school that graduates more Latino students than any other in the state of California. A school that has injected you with that Titan spirit that will always be there to remind you to reach higher. But most importantly, you're lucky to have parents that care so much for you. It was your parents who were there for you since kindergarten, making sure that you did your homework, applauding your every academic achievement, creating albums with your school pictures throughout the years. It was your parents who worked hard so that you could go to college whether it was providing the funds or giving you encouragement or making sure that you had a nice warm meal while you navigate una sopita de arroz mm, que rico while you navigated the complicated college application process they were there we're passing the baton to you now and it's your responsibility to take over and conquer the world you are our future leaders our future lawyers doctors entrepreneurs, bankers, engineers, physicists, politicians. Who knows, maybe the first Hispanic president is among you. Or the first, could be you. Or the first Asian American president, maybe. Sorry, but the spot for the first African American president has already been filled. And the one for the first woman president or the first Jewish American socialist president is around the corner. And those are the only choices, by the way. You are, the <laughs> you are the future and you are the ones that are going to build bridges, not walls. You know, <laughs> you know, there's some people out there that say that millennials is a generation that feels entitled. Is that true? No. It couldn't possibly be. I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to go out and prove them wrong. I challenge you to take advantage of all those wonderful assets that you have us, and show us all that you can succeed in achieving your goals. I'm not talking about living up to our expectations, but going after your own dreams. And to accomplish that, the first thing you need to do is believe in yourself, eliminate those obstacles that don't allow you to be the best you. You know the ones I'm talking about, those obstacles that you have in your head, usually in, in the back of, of your head. They're the ones that tell you you can't, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. Those obstacles that prevent you from raising your hand and saying, I'm here and I can do the job. It's those same obstacles that make you give up when you're rejected or prevent you from getting up when you fall. Just bypass those obstacles and say, I'm here, and I'm moving forward, and nothing is going to stop me. Believe me, you will be stronger for it. There are enough obstacles out there to allow your insecurities to get in the way. You think I didn't have those challenges? You think a Latina with an undocumented father, a mother who was a seamstress, working my way through high school, not being able to graduate from college, didn't have my own degree of barriers? Well, I did. In fact, I still do every single day. But I've been able to overcome those barriers by following a set of values that have served as building blocks in my life and in my career. Believing in myself, always striving to do my best, having a strong work ethic, not taking no for an answer, and believing that I could make a difference in someone's life. Let me tell you a little story about someone among you today who didn't let obstacles get in the way of achieving her goal. She wrote me an email about two weeks ago when she found out that I was going to be the commencement speaker. She said she had been following my career for many years and her goal was to be a journalist. Through an adverse set of circumstances, she had to put her dreams aside. She was a victim of domestic abuse. She had to care for her daughters alone and she was undocumented. When she was finally able to become a legal resident, she went back to school at 37 and is now graduating at 43 years of age. She thanks me. She thanks me in her email for inspiring her through my work in the beginning and for being here today and inspiring her again in the last stage of education. Betty Martinez, you have no idea how much I was inspired by your story and by you. 
Her father is here. Señor José Martínez Santelices, felicidades, debe de estar muy orgulloso de su hija. I want to say something to you that I have been saying to students like you. As your commencement speaker, I'm supposed to inspire you, but you inspire me. Your youth, your energy, your inquisitive minds, your knowledge, your creativity, your independence, your resilience, your tremendous potential, your eagerness to conquer the world. You are an amazing generation, and I want to live to be 100 so that I could experience the world that you are going to build. Váyanse a comer el mundo. Gracias. Buenos días. Dr. Maria Alenas, thank you so much for your inspiring talk. You shared yourself, you included our students, and you inspired every single one of us. Join me again in thanking Dr. Salinas. It is now my pleasure to invite Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Jose Luis Cruz, to the lectern. Provost Cruz. Thank you, President Garcia. Y muchas gracias a la doctora María Elena Salinas por su vida llena de compromiso y su apoyo a la comunidad hispana. And good morning, Cal State Fullerton class of 2016. It is the moment you have all been waiting for, or the start of the moment that you have all been waiting for. It is now time to recognize and perform the hooding ceremony for the third class of graduates in the Cal State Fullerton Doctor of Nursing Practice program. May the graduates please approach. A doctorate degree is the highest level of academic degree and accomplishment. We are very proud of these titans who have reached higher to fulfill this pinnacle of academic achievement. Dr. Laurie Rhodes, Dean of the College of Health and Human Development, and I will be performing the hooding ceremony today. Christina Morris. Suzanne Tang. Gina Goodchair Rest Rawson. Nadine Brown Farr. Mira Cabios Castaneda. Sri Devi Sunil Warrior. Patricia Aguinaldo. Michelle Alfe. Annette C. Michelle Ferrolito. Dimling Tran. Darlene Falco. Cynthia Flores Sanchez.
Nancy Hauser. Jun Yong Kim. Brooke Baldwin Rodriguez. Colette Spencer. Maria H. Letts. Rosine de Travidian. Robin Marie Clifton Keppel. George Lee. Martha Gina Mitchell. Ana Munoz. Yvonne Gallegos. Kimberly Ligens Fonteno. Congratulations to these outstanding graduates on this important accomplishment. It is now time to recognize those graduates who have earned their bachelor's degrees with honors. Outstanding scholastic achievements at the baccalaureate level are recognized upon completion of degree requirements by the awarding of honors. In recognition of their scholastic excellence, all honors graduates are presented with a medallion with the seal of California State University Fullerton imprinted on it, and the level of honors achieved is en engraved on the reverse side. Although their names are annotated in the commencement program, I would like to recognize each group of honors graduates. Individuals graduating summa cum laude, wearing their medallions with blue ribbons, please stand and remain standing. Individuals graduating magna cum laude, wearing their medallions with orange ribbons, please stand and remain standing. Individuals graduating cum laude, wearing their medallions with white ribbons, please stand. Congratulations to all our honors graduates. We're very proud of you. Please be seated. Now, we've reached that moment. Will all doctorate graduates and candidates please stand? Will all master's graduates and candidates please stand? Will all baccalaureate graduates and candidates please stand? President Garcia, on behalf of the faculty of California State University Fullerton, I am pleased and honored to present to you the graduates and candidates of the class of 2016 for the conferring of their degrees. We're ready? Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Doctorate in Education program graduates and candidates, master's graduates and candidates, Baccalaureate graduates and candidates, it is with great privilege and honor before value, familia, family, and friends, and upon the recommendation of the administration and teaching faculty, the amazing faculty of the California State University Fullerton, and by the authority vested in me as president of the university by the CSU Board of Trustees to confirm upon all of you completing requirements the degrees for which your name is listed in our commencement program, together with the rights, privileges, opportunities, and responsibilities to our society attached thereto, your diplomas will stand as testimony to your possession of these degrees. 
as a symbol of conferral of your degree, baccalaureate candidates may move the tassel from the right side of their cap to the left. Congratulations, felicidades. We're very proud of you. The 2016 University Commencement Ceremony is now concluded. We ask that the audience remain seated as the platform party exits the stage. When the platform party has exited, please proceed to the location of your college or department ceremony. Congratulations to our 2016 graduates and their families and friends visiting today. We hope you enjoy your day on campus. The 2016 University Commencement Ceremony for Cal State Fullerton is concluded. Congratulations to all of you for reaching this significant milestone in your life. <laughs>